In this video, we will analyze all the details of Teradata spool space so you can better handle spool space issues in your daily work with Teradata. I recommend you to watch the video until the end, when I give you practical tips on how to solve spool space problems easily. Have fun! Teradata spool space is a workspace that Teradata uses to store temporary and final query result sets. Spool space is only used temporarily and released when it is no longer needed or latest, automatically when the session ends. There are four types of spool space, which we will explain in this video. It is essential for a Teradata system that there is always enough space to be used as spool space, the so-called spool reserve. You may accomplish this in one of two ways. Set aside permanent space that will always be unoccupied or create an empty database below database DBC to reserve the space. The benefit of assigning space under the DBC database for spool usage is that it will make additional system uses possible. Still, there's the risk that you won't remember to keep this space reserved and unintentionally use it for other databases as permanent space. The better alternative is to create a child database under database DBC and allocate permanent space to reserve spool space. This database should not be used to store any data. Its permanent space is usable as spool space as long as the database is empty. If our Teradata system is running out of space, there are several ways to free up space without an immediate system upgrade. We will discuss them later in this video. Teradata never simultaneously holds permanent data and spool space on the same cylinder. Therefore, cylinders are released immediately when Teradata no longer needs them as spool space to make them available for other purposes. On older Teradata systems, block-level compression may not be enabled, but multi-value compression is also an option to free up space. A relatively unknown trick with which it is often possible to reduce table size by up to 90% is to design row-level partitioning so that the same values from a column are placed in the same partitions. This way, they are stored locally in the same data blocks and can be compressed much better by block-level compression. Removing fallback protection and in used indexes is another option to free up space. However, with the newer Teradata systems, fallback protection is mandatory. Finally there is always the possibility of a system upgrade. When we get to the point where there is not enough space available, the rule is, it is better to be out of spool space than out of permanently used space because if there is not enough permanent space available, it will typically impact a DML statement, which leads to a rollback. Select statements mainly use spool space, and no rollbacks are happening. Spool space can be assigned when we create a user. The assigned spool space represents the upper limit for this user. The available spool space is distributed evenly among all amps. Now let us discuss spool space issues that have causes other than the Teradata system running out of space. What if you get the error message, no more spool space in user username, but there should be enough space available? As Teradata divides the total spool space by the number of amps, each amp has only a fraction of the space available. If a query is skewed, it can happen that just one or a few amps do not have enough space available, and Teradata aborts the request. As a general rule, the more amps a system has, the greater the risk, as you can see in the picture. By the way, it is pretty easy to find out the spool space of a user with the following query. If you're wondering why there's a spool limit per user at all, here's why. A limit is needed to abort requests with too high a consumption of resources. Even if high spool space usage does not always mean a bad query, the correlation between bad queries and high spool space usage is high. There can be several reasons why our query aborts due to insufficient spool space. One reason might be that there are no more free cylinders on the Teradata system. We must prevent the situation where all cylinders are full at all costs. Usually, as mentioned initially in this video, the database administrator usually creates a separate database to block space and avoid the system running out of free cylinders. No more spool space can also be caused by too many parallel sessions of the same user. Finally, no more spool space can be triggered by skewed queries or volatile tables. No primary index tables are ideal for improving loading times with bulk load utilities. 
but a transactional insert into statement into a NOPI table can create SKU as rows are inserted locally on its AMP. In this case, we can avoid SKU by redistributing the rows with the hash by random directive. The first execution plan reveals that rows stay on the AMP they are already. The second execution plan distributes the rows equally to all AMPs, see the statement, redistributed randomly to all AMPs, it helps to avoid the SKU issues. After a Teradata upgrade, it can happen that queries that worked before without problems suddenly get spool problems. This occurs as the number of AMPs is higher than before after the upgrade, but the disk space is not scaled proportionally. There is less disk space available for each AMP. The following query can check the number of AMPs. Let's move on to a more rare problem, phantom spool and leftover spool. For phantom spool, the table dbc.database space shows that the spool is in use, but Teradata occupies no space on the disk. A leftover spool is the Teradata spool space that remains occupied after a request has ended. The easiest way, without using the console, is to execute the following procedure. We can use this procedure to solve phantom spool problems and correct inconsistencies in the dbc.database space table. Teradata distinguishes four different types of spool space. Intermediate spool, it will be released as soon as it is no longer needed. Intermediate spool space is required by derived subqueries. The execution plan provides information about when spool space is released. Output spool, the output spool space holds the result of an SQL request. Volatile spool, Teradata uses volatile spool space for volatile tables. Persistent spool, persistent spool space survives a system restart or the crash of a node. We can define the critical workload procession or the whole system which should be protected with persistent spool. Finally, we come to a topic that probably interests most viewers of this video. How to solve the Teradata spool space error failure 2646 no more spool space. As mentioned, no more spool space can be triggered by different problems. Here are some ideas on how to avoid them. Ensure up-to-date statistics. Current statistics are essential so that the optimizer does not copy large amounts of data between the amps. Choose a good primary index. Choose a primary index for your tables that distributes the rows evenly across all amps. Another consideration which is important, prevent the no more spool space on the system level. Prevent the system from getting into a situation where spool space is no longer available, example, through a spool reserve database. Release spool space as soon as possible. Drop volatile tables immediately when they are no longer needed. Often you rely on this to happen automatically at the end of the session. Don't do it. Not dropping the volatile tables immediately unnecessarily blocks spool space and cylinders that Teradata could use as permanent space. Use multi-value compression. Multi-value compression allows the optimizer to keep data blocks compressed in the main memory. Therefore, it is a suitable tool to reduce the required spool space. It makes sense, especially for large tables with few different values in a column and wide columns. Use the appropriate data types. Data types should be chosen to cover all domain values but should not require unnecessary space. If a byte integer is sufficient, then, example, we should define no integer column because this needs four times as much space in the spool space if the column was not compressed. Instead of a character column, a variable character column should be used to save spool space, again, this is relevant if the column was not compressed. Enforce primary index access instead of full table scans. The workload should be designed so that primary index accesses dominate. Above all, UPI or USI access ensures that no spool space is required. Often a good physical data model is the best tool to prevent spool space problems. Row partitioning helps to reduce full table scans to specific partitions. Use the data block size parameter to create smaller data blocks. If our workload is primarily tactical, we can use smaller data blocks to prevent the spool needed. Use columnar table design. If the access pattern is suitable, columnar tables can reduce the needed spool space enormously because only needed columns have to be spooled. However, columnar tables must be analyzed precisely and adapted to the workload. We can also achieve a similar result by reducing the number of columns in a table, 
called vertical partitioning. This brings us to the end of this video. I hope it gave you a good overview of spool space and will help you in your daily work with Teradata. If you want to see more videos like this about Teradata related topics, please leave a comment, and a like would also be quite helpful. See you soon.